So I showed you how to take an individual cell type, convert it into pseudobulk, and use PyDC2 to get the differentially expressed genes. So pseudobulk differential expression is actually pretty easy now that PyDSeq2 exists. For this example data set, I just have lung cells from a data set exploring lethal COVID-19. And I have around 98,000 cells, a bunch of different cell types, and 27 different samples, seven of which are controls. So the first goal is going to be to subset the data. So I'm going to start with macrophages. You can pick whatever cell type or subset of cells that you want. The concepts are going to be the same. But let's start by loading in some modules that we're going to need. And here, again, I just have this big annotated A data object with 99,000 cells. And I'm going to start, like I said, by testing only the macrophages. So I'm going to subset the A data by cell type, which is a column in the observation data frame. And you see we now have a, a data object called cell subset that only has 23,000 cells. And to make this into pseudobulk is actually quite simple. So here's just a quick toy example. Let's say this is our A data or our counts. We have two samples in this example. We have a bunch of cells. All we're really doing with pseudobulk is taking these raw counts and compressing them into one row. So we're just taking the sum of each column and whatever subset, in this case, this is equal to 109. In this example, there's only two samples, and you can't really do differential expression between two samples. It's always better to have at least three samples, but you can get away with doing pseudo replicates, which would look like this. So we still have two samples here, but we can now subset those samples into multiple pseudo replicates in an individual sample. So our output counts table is still only going to have two samples, but we're going to have pseudo replicates within them. Okay, so we have our cell subset of just macrophages. And if we were to look at that, in this case, every sample has over 100 cells in it, but you want to be careful with doing too few cells in this comparison. For example, you could set an arbitrary threshold only do pseudobulk within a sample that has at least 30 cells. We don't have to worry about that here. So we're just going to make a loop over all the samples. All we're really doing is we're going to subset our subset even further. Now, instead of just macrophages, we're doing macrophages that belong to an individual sample. So we're just subsetting that. And then one important point here is that my A data has already been normalized and converted to log. We want the raw data for this. So where your raw data is might be different depending on your A data object. If it's not normalized already, you can just use the X directly. In my case, I have the raw data saved under the counts layer. So for my data, I am going to update the dot X of this sample cell subset with the counts layer. So I'm just erasing the normalized counts and putting the raw counts in the X slot. So just ignore this line if you already have the raw data in the X slot. We're now gonna make a new and data object where the X is only one row, which would be equivalent to one cell in a single cell A data object. It's only gonna be the sum across the counts matrix with axis equals zero, so it sums all the genes. And then we also have to pass var to get the gene names to transfer to this new and data object. So we're making this new one sample a data object. And then we're going to set the obs names, which in this case is only going to be one name because it's only one cell or sample. And it's going to be equal to sample, which is what we're looping over. So it's going to get one of these labels. And then my data also has the condition. So if we were to look at, actually, let me just run this real fast. If we look at the OBS, it has the condition in it. So this might be a little different depending on what your data set is. And then since it's a cell sample subset, it's going to be COVID-19 in every single cell. So I'm just taking the first entry, which is ILOC0. And I'm transferring that into a new condition in our new rep A data. So if we look at rep A data, 
this is before I've added the condition. It's only one sample and 20,000 genes. And so that's all we really have to do. So we're going to make a list called PBS or pseudo bulks, and we're just going to append the rep A data to that. So it's just going to make a list of individual rep A datas that look like this, which have one sample each. So now that we have that list of pseudo bulk samples, we can just combine it with a secant cat. And now we have our 27 samples. We look at OBS. We have control or COVID. And if we look at VAR, we have the gene names. So our pseudo bulk is ready to go. But let's say you don't have these 27 samples. Let's say you have two samples and you wanted to make pseudo replicates. We can do that really easily. We can take what we just did here and just modify it a little bit. This first part's going to be the same, but let's add some spaces here. We're going to set indices to all the OBS names, so all the cell names from our sample cell subset, and then we're going to shuffle them, and then we're going to use NumPy to split them into three different chunks. So depending on how many pseudo replicates you want, you can change this. In this case, we're going to have three pseudo replicates per sample. And now we're just going to put this into a little loop that loops over the three chunks we make here. So I'm just enumerating over those three chunks so that I get it I, which is going to be 0, 1, or 2, so that I can put that as the replicate number. And the only other thing we have to add here is another observation column that has that replicate number in it so that we can differentiate between the samples. So let me just do two pseudo replicates and run this so I can show you how it looks. And just like before, we can concat all those. Actually, let me fix this warning here. So instead of just sample here, I'm just going to append the index to it. So I'm going to rerun this real fast. All right, so if we look at PB, you know, I have twice as many samples. And if we look at the OBS, you see we have for each sample zero or one, because now we have two replicates for each. But since I have so many samples, I'm not going to do pseudo replicates. So I'm just going to run this first chunk we made and then go ahead with the differential expression. So once we have our pseudo bulk and data object, the differential expression is very straightforward. We're going to be using pydseq2 and we'll import it like this if you don't have it. You have to use pip to install it. To carry over the gene names, we need to make a new counts data frame with pandas, which takes the raw data from our pseudobulk object and sets the columns of the data frame as the var names or the gene names from the pseudobulk. This is just our counts matrix with the gene names. And then we'll initialize our dseq data set. So we're passing our counts table. The metadata is going to be pb.obs, which is just this data frame here. And we have the condition column, which we're using as the design factor. If you had multiple factors, for example, batch, you could make this a little more complicated. Funny enough, DDS is itself an and data object, which allows us to use ScanP to actually filter out genes that aren't found in at least one sample. And now we're left with the ones that are actually found in the data. And then we can go ahead and call dseq2 on our DDS object. If you wanted to plot the PCA, again, we can use ScanP. And we're just passing that condition column again. And then now we can actually get the differentially expressed genes. We're passing our DDS object to dseq stats and we're specifying the contrast so it's the condition column and then we're doing COVID-19 condition versus the control condition and then after we set this we have to call summary so now we have the DE results and to look at the data frame we can call results data frame from within stat res and now we have our differentially expressed data frame you can sort this or do whatever you want with it now in your downstream analysis. So I showed you how to take an individual cell type from single cell data, convert it into pseudobulk, and use pydseq2 to get the differentially expressed genes.